for the screening of patients, either uh, children or uh, adults. Uh, we screen them for uh, first time, and usually it is uh, the screening is negative, totally negative. And one of the patients were screened twice, and uh, in the second time he, he was positive. And for all the cases, most most of the cases, almost 90% of them, the, the chest uh, physician is insisting that he, they are uh, suspected cases. So we still uh, continue for uh, isolation and re-investigations, but also most of the cases appear also negative. So we are really, uh, it's positive, and we are stuck for the isolation and what about the carriers, the healthcare workers, so how do, did you do the screening by the uh, rapid test, uh, by the serology, or by the PCR enough uh, alone, or both of them? Yeah, that's, a very, good go for, uh... Uh, that's a very good question. I'd like to offer some of my comments, and also go for, go can add, add on my comments. Sure. Uh, well, you know, at the initial stage of this outbreak here in China, it, it is um, kind of difficult uh, for several reasons. The first one is just that you mentioned um, the, the false negativity uh, of tests uh, for PCR. Um, to overcome this, I believe a very useful strategy is uh, to repeat it, test, test them repeatedly. Uh, we generally believe the PCR test, the positivity rate is about 50%. Um, which means if you test one, 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 one true patient, you have 50% of the chance to get a false negative result. Uh, but so, you know, by math, the important strategy to overcome this is to test them for several times. Uh, How many times? If you suspect them, you, you test them, you know, maybe every other day or every two days, uh, it can reduce the false negativity uh, among these people. Uh, secondly, uh, the another strategy we used is um, CT scanning. A lot of our patients have accepted these, uh, under, underwent PC scan. Uh, CT scan, uh, especially if, if he or she has a contact history, it, it can be really useful uh, from the perspective of a pulmonologist like me. Uh, just because the the CT scan, this abnormality on the CT scan can be kind of a characteristic, especially combined with the history of contact history. Uh, so especially when you do not have a very high confidence in PCR tests or the turnaround time is really long, uh, you really suspect them, uh, CT scanning can be helpful. Uh, third thing you've mentioned is uh, sero serological tests, uh, the antibodies. I, we have a lot of you know, positive antibody tests uh, among patients. Uh, the rate is kind of high. Uh, more than 90% in our patients in the ICU. Um, but uh, the serology, the problem of the serology is it takes time to to turn positive. It takes one week or two. So maybe, you know, in retrospect, you can use the serological test to confirm the patient has experienced the di disease. But it's hard if you want to identify them in the early stage. Uh, uh, last but not least, we, we would like to, you know, to make a diagnosis, we would like to use the different methods holistically. Uh, you don't want to rely on one single test to sort out all the patients. Uh, if you highly suspect them, uh, you don't have a positive conclusion. Isolate them. Isolate them to treat them like uh, infected patients and isolate them, put, put them in a single room to see what happens. Maybe one week later, the serology come back and positive. Or the next time you test them with PCR, it's positive. Uh, the CT scanning, you have a, a very classical evolution of the disease. You will find out, but do not let them stay home or in the community spread disease. That's my opinion. Uh, just as uh, Dr. Fan said, and actually here in China, when we first contact the suspect patient with COVID-19, we will prescribe CT scan and uh, the PCR tests simultaneously uh, to see if the patient is getting the disease. Uh, and uh, if the CT scan is positive, that means you can see the ground glass patches uh, on the peripheral uh, zones of, the, of both lungs. 
and then you, it is highly suspected of COVID-19. Uh, if the PCR tests turned negative, then we will perform the PCR tests uh, again. Uh, and uh, if, the, if it is still negative, then we will perform serology tests for specific antibodies. And uh, one more thing I wanna say is that I think the main reason for the false negativity is related to sample collection. Yes. And uh, actually some studies has shown that uh, nasal swabs is preferred uh, rather than uh, throat swabs. Uh, and no matter what type of swab you are gonna get, uh, pharyngeal sample should be collected during the test. That can reduce the false negativity. Yeah, if you if you want to, you know, to identify all the cases, augmented test capacity is crucial. Uh, you have to do the test again and again uh, just to identify every patient. And also, um, we have like adopted uh, uh, adopted a criteria including uh, two negative tests uh, by PCR before we discharge patients to send them home. And uh, a great part of the patients who were discharged are uh, followed up regularly after two weeks to see if they still have a positive PCR. So the, aug the augmentation or the expanding of uh, testing capacity is very important. 